Hello friends, I am Dr. Pooja Kapoor, Consultant Pediatric Neurologist, Paris Hospital Gurgaon, Director and Co-Founder Continua Kids. So the topic of today's discussion is Role of Environmental Factors as Causative Agent in Autism Spectrum Disorder. So as we all know that we are still not uh, able to pinpoint the exact causative agent but we understand that that autism is caused between interplay between some environmental factors and some genetic factors. So today we are going to elaborate upon the environmental factors which are suspected to cause uh, autism spectrum disorder if the mother is exposed to certain agents that means during the antenatal period and once the child is born that is during the perinatal period. So, the first is exposure to valproic acid. So, valproic acid is an anti-epileptic. It is a medication which is used to prevent seizures in the mother. So, if the mother is exposed or is using valproic acid to prevent, to, uh, prevent seizures during the pregnancy, then there are higher chances that the child could have autism spectrum disorder. Similarly, there are other independent risk factors the other is uh, gestational diabetes in the mother that means if the mother has diabetes during the gestational period during the pregnancy then the chances are much higher to have a child who has got autism spectrum disorder the other independent risk factors is bleeding per vaginum so if the mother has tendency of bleeding during these nine months then this is again associated as a high risk factor the next is advanced paternal age. So as the age of the parents advances, the chances of having the risk increases with the increasing age of the parents. The next is exposure to uh, intrauterine infections like rubella infection, like cytome cytomegalovirus infection. So these are viral infection which if the mother is exposed during the pregnancy period the virus can go through the mother from the placenta to the baby and it can cause it has a, got a high risk to have autism spectrum disorder in the child. So then there are other perinatal risk factors like if the child is born preterm. So, we consider 37 completed weeks of gestation as term baby. So, if the child is born before that, then again this is an independent risk factor. The other is intrauterine growth retardation. That is IUGR. So, if the, if the baby is not uh, developing properly in the growth parameters or the weight parameters when in utero as compared to a normal child, then there are higher chances of having autism later in life. The next is low birth weight. So, a child who is born less than 2.5 kg at term is called as low birth weight. Or accordingly, there are per gestational age, there are certain weight limitations. So, if the child is born below that, then it is called as low birth weight. So, again, this is an independent risk factor. Now, the other risk factors are if the mother is exposed during the pregnancy to insecticides, specifically organophosphates insecticides. So, this is the pesticides which we put in for on our crop to prevent the insects. Uh, so, if the mother is exposed during or uh, during if the, if the vegetables or things are not washed properly and it is, there is an intake of these directly to the mother or if it's a direct exposure of these pesticides during the antenatal period, then the, definitely the chances of having autism spectrum disorder is higher. Then the next is air pollution. Uh, air pollution has been really extensively studied and there are two independent uh, pollutants specifically these are particulate matter and nitrogen dioxide. So these two have been extensively studied and in a lot of studies a correlation has been found out that in there, if there is a lot of higher air pollution in the air uh, there are higher chances that the mother could have autism spectrum child. 
so these are all the independent risk factors which have been studied in various studies although the perfect or the exact correlation has not been replicated in uh, multiple studies but definitely a few of the studies have shown a strong correlation so it's always prudent to uh, it's always better to stop these agents and give very good antenatal care to the mother so that the mother does not have bleeding so the mother does not have gestational diabetes so the mother does not have uterine intrauterine infections so uh, to prevent rubella infection during the pregnancy during the adolescent period the females should be vaccinated again uh, for mmr vaccine that is measles mumps rubella so here rubella vaccination is must it should not be given the vaccination should not be given during the antenatal period because then you are exposing the mother directly to the virus but beforehand that is why during the adolescent period of the girl so these are the risk factors which should be avoided so the take home message is whatsoever i've told you let the mother have a good pregnancy period antenatal period so that we could have a healthy good uh, neonate and a newborn is really uh, uh, healthy and have good health thereafter also so this is all i have for today we'll meet up next time with some interesting topic uh, associated with autism spectrum thank you for patient hearing